Hello, hope you're all doing well out there. Today, we're going to be talking about this. Why is volunteering important? And we chose this topic today um, because we were thinking that um, throughout your lifetime and my lifetime, um, deaf people used to get involved in volunteering for all kinds of different things. Of course, hearing people have always been involved in volunteering. But what we've noticed recently is that that landscape has changed and that deaf people tend to get less involved in volunteering these days. Now, next week is the UK's Volunteers Week that runs from the 1st to the 7th of June. And the aim of that is to try and encourage more people to get involved in volunteering. So we thought this was the perfect time to have this discussion so that you might consider volunteering and get involved in Volunteers Week next week. We have three very special guests for you to meet, um, to join us in our blether this evening. Um, all of them have had experience of volunteering in different arenas and perhaps their input will make you think about areas that you could volunteer. So the first guest I'd like to welcome tonight is Jerry Malley. Hello, Jerry. Hello. Hi there. Lovely to see you. Thanks for coming along. Perhaps you could just introduce yourself, say who you are and where you're from. Yep, my name's Jerry Malley um, and I live here in Aberdeen. I grew up, uh, I was born in Motherwell. And I used to go to Hamilton Deaf Club. That was my regular Deaf Club. I grew there, going there all the time. That closed and I moved to St Vincent's Club and Glasgow Deaf Club. And I was there all the time until I moved to Aberdeen and I get married. And I've been here now 26 years. And Time no flies. I know. <laughs> I'm going to come back uh, and talk to you more about your volunteering, Jerry. if you'll just bear with us for a moment while I introduce our second guest. I'd like to welcome Lillian Lawson. Hello, hello. Nice that you could join us. Um, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself um, and, and some things that you've been doing? Hello, yes, I'm Liz Lillian Lawson. I'm from Glasgow, but I was actually born in Fife. Um, I went to school in Edinburgh uh, and I moved to Glasgow, oh no, let me think, 1974. So I've been here over oh, 40 years. Wow. We're going to come back to that, uh, Lillian, and talk to you both, in fact, about your volunteering experience. But I have another guest to introduce. I'd like to welcome Moira, Moira Ross. Hi there. Hi, can you tell us a bit about yourself, Moira? Yeah, well, I'm Moira Ross. I was born and bred in Glasgow and I'm still here. That's a bit. <laughs> Great. That's a strong start. Um, now, the three of you are aware that next week is the UK's Volunteers Week. Um, and volunteering is quite a crucial thing. Um, I know I've, I've spoken to each of you and you all have a really rich background when it comes to volunteering. You've had many experiences. Uh, perhaps within the deaf club or within sports, um, working with hearing people and hearing organisations. So the aim of tonight is really to talk to you about those experiences and try and encourage our audience to think about volunteering opportunities that they might get involved in um, and also, you know, enjoy hearing about your experiences. So, Jerry, can I come to you first? and ask, you've been a Deaf Club Chair for Aberdeen Deaf Club, am I right? Can you tell us more about that? How did you get involved in volunteering there? I've been the chair for a long time, 13 or 14 years. Our old club had moved and we've moved to Ness and I've still been there as the chair all that time. And that's been volunteering work and have you enjoyed that? Have you been volunteering on committees as well? Yeah, and six diff there's six of us on the committee and we really work wow. well together and everything goes smooth. I really enjoy working with other people. Okay, so you've been the volunteer chair and you've been volunteer on the committee. Can I come to you, Lillian, because you've had a number of volunteer experiences, haven't you? 
Well, yeah, let me think. Um, I think I started when I was about eight or nine years old. I used to go with my mother um, uh, doing the charity day, flag day. Um, so when I went home from school, we, I would go out with her at the weekends door to door. And my mother was involved in the Parents Teachers Association and lots of committee meetings. So I think that's probably where I get it from. It seemed natural for me to get involved in committees, really. And I started, I think my first committee was the Under 30s Club um, at Edinburgh Deaf Club. And at that time, there was no real youth uh, wing um, so we got together and decided we'd set up a club for people under 30. Um, we organised lots of activities, badminton, outing, visits and so on. It was great. Um, and then I moved to Glasgow after that uh, and got involved in the badminton club here. Um, and they asked me if I'd get involved in the committee as the secretary. I don't even really just moved, but um, yeah, took it on. And um, yeah, it was great. And just before I moved to Glasgow, I, well, it was nice because I felt, I, you know, I was new, the new kid on the block and it, it helped me meet lots of people. And I also used to go to Eventide home, you know, the old folks home. And um, yeah, I used to go along there, volunteered on Sundays. You know, we, we, it was a bit of a rota. We'd go on different days and the staff would have some time off and we could go in and chat with the residents. It was lovely hearing all the old people's stories and their tales from the past. It was great. And I think we gave them a bit of a boost as well. And we sell them coffee and, and sweets and so on. So it was quid pro quo. It was really nice. We're going to come back to you about that because I know you've got a great wealth of volunteering. But old people's homes and care homes and things, particularly with sign language, it, it's, it brings such a rich dimension, doesn't it? Um, and so nice to hear that you learned those skills at, at your mother's knee, really. Moira, you've been involved in volunteering as well, I believe. I think uh, my first volunteering was, um, I was 17, I passed by this building and I thought it was deaf blind people there. But the second time I had the courage enough to go in and ask do, who they were. And anyway, I went in, told them I was deaf and they offered me training. I went on the training to learn about uh, working with people who are deaf blind. Uh, I took a deaf child uh, for a summer holiday and I was with her to oh, give lovely. parents some respite. So that was part of it as well. I did other things like within deaf organisations. I was involved in the netball, the youth club, the drama club. I was on the committee of each of those uh, clubs as well. But also... The, the deaf bl blind person wanted me to go with her and translate for her. So I went to Stornoway, Italy, all these Excellent. different places. Yeah, <laughs> I did. she wanted me to go. And one thing I did forget about is I was in the Prince's Trust Volunteers. Oh, I was yes. in that. And that was through the summer. And that was amazing. So volunteering can actually take you places. So you're going away to the, the islands, you know, the Outer Hebrides and Italy. And so, so really useful experiences because you're getting Absolutely. to travel and to learn. Coming back to you, Jerry, you said, um, you know, you got involved in the, in the committee at Aberdeen, but had you volunteered much before that? Mostly I loved the drama uh, at Hamilton. Um, there, I used to watch the drama, but then I, I moved on to St Vincent's and I got involved in St Vincent's Drama Club and it was utterly fantastic. Moira was in there with me. Oh, the yeah, two of you. Was, yes, we had an audience. We, it was a genuine audience. Everybody loved it. But that things have changed. Well, St Vincent's have gone. But then I went to Glasgow Deaf Club and I got involved in drama again with Moira and with Moira's sister Helen at the time. Remember that? So if you're both involved in the drama, was that volunteering? What Were you just performing or were you designing the sets or what, what kind of things were you doing? Oh, you were involved in the, the, the drama. So it was like I was doing my acting. Moira, but, do you want to add to that? Yeah, but remember, Jerry, we had to sort of like look at props and find props and we had to sell the tickets and try and get the people in. So there was part of that as well. It wasn't just the, the acting, we had to raise money for the, the show so a range of skills then jerry sorry that's right the music equipment we had to work out how to do the music equipment and we had to time it for signing songs 
So actually, you think you're getting involved in one thing, but it involves a whole range of skills. Jerry, I, I know that you were involved during lockdown. Um, uh, you were um, took quite an active role on Facebook in a particular group. You were chairing a group and supporting a group, and and that's volunteering as well, really, isn't yeah. it? You, you know, a, a lot of deaf people getting more and more involved, kind of convening groups on on Facebook, and and those skills are really invaluable as well. I can remember the time at the Deaf Club in Aberdeen ages ago, and but just when COVID just to start, and there was confusion everywhere. And the committee were there, and it was bingo time. Anyway, uh, there was lots of uh, deaf people, you know, have now disappeared to other places. But now that the Aberdeen's clapped back again, hopefully we'll get people back. And you were volunteering through COVID on Zoom, doing the bingo thing. And I think that probably kept a lot of deaf people going and, and kept them, you know, away from feeling isolated. So that's a really useful experience. I'd like to ask you all whether you feel that volunteering is important because we're seeing this drop in people being involved in volunteering. So could you tell me why do you think volunteering is important to you, Lillian? Yeah, I think a lot of people don't really understand volunteering. When I was younger, um, I, I tended to be involved in lots of committees. That was mostly how you did it, you know. And also, as I said, you know, supporting people at the Eventide home, um, you know, and, and uh, getting involved with redecorating the old folks' home with the youth group, which, which also taught people how, you know, decorating skills. So that was really useful. But I think... Young people think, oh, you know, it's it, it's a way, a cheap labour, really. But actually, it's not. You know, it can actually give you more skills than you contribute. So I'd really encourage young people to think about that. You know, it doesn't have to be about committees. It can be sports. It can be activities. It can be all kinds of things. So you, I think, have, well, has volunteering been important to you in your life? And, and, and how so? Oh, yeah, it's been great for me. I've made lots of new and good friends from it. I've picked up a lot of skills. For example, I was involved in the Glasgow Deaf Photography Walk. I volunteered to help fundraise for them. Um, but, but, you know, they got training on how to improve their photography. So that really helped me as well. I made friends. Um, I was going outside. I was walking. That kept me fit. And uh, also... I picked up on some of those photography skills as well. So, so it's a circular economy, isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean, they don't use automatic cameras. They have these manual cameras and they were teaching me, it really forced me to get to grips with that. So that sort of thing, really. And if you hadn't volunteered, that wouldn't have happened, right? You wouldn't have picked up those skills. Moira, why has volunteering been important to you? Well, I think volunteer is important because it's an opportunity to be kind, to learn things new, and you're giving up your time to see what what other things are out there. Oh, sorry, oh, just lost you for a second. We've lost Moira. I'm sure she'll be back. Um, Jerry, can I come to you in the meantime? Why why is volunteer? Oh, you, oh Moira, you're back. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. You were, tell us more. Tell us more. As I said. Kindness, experience and challenge all comes with volunteering. I can remember um, way back all those skills that I've learned um, working with deaf blind people gives me, I feel empowered to work with young or older deaf blind people. I've got those extra skills that I've learned. I know how to uh, uh, book things, administration skills, raising money. So you're right. You go in doing one thing, but you come out with a, a, a bag full of extra tools. So you're always learning and adding to your toolkit, and that helps to develop you. Jerry, do you feel like volunteering has been an important thing to you? And and if so, how has it helped you? You know, as Lillian and, and Moira have said, they felt it helped them. Has that been your experience too? Yeah, I agree. Volunteering is really important. If we didn't have anything, we wouldn't have a deaf community. We've relied on volunteering for, for centuries. So it's important. Our deaf club's small. We rely on everybody in there. So very important in terms of keeping the deaf club going. Yes, absolutely. And just keeping a real life. And just keeping sign language alive and also for your mental health and well-being, I'm thinking as well. 
Absolutely. It gets you out of the house, you know, it gets you out meeting people. And I think that's really good for your mental health. Yeah. Also, um, at the deaf club, sometimes you would have things at night, say seven till 11 at night. And then we change it to the afternoon because we realised that our audience were becoming older, our members becoming over, and nighttime was becoming more fearful for them and they, they were frightened they would fall. So the numbers were reducing. So we were able to adapt very quickly and change it to make sure that our members kept up the capacity and that they were happy. You know, so things like you know, we would do that every week and then we decided to change it to two weeks to suit everyone. So you have to be adaptable as well, right? Okay, and volunteers can do that. Um, so thinking about volunteering, Lillian, I know that you have been, um, was it 2014, you were involved in a very interesting volunteer experience. So um, maybe, well, I was going to say a photograph, but maybe Lillian, you should reveal to us what it was you were involved in in 2014. Lillian, could you tell us more about that? Sure. Um, so I got involved in the Commonwealth Games. Um, uh, that was based in Glasgow that year. So I'd always watched sport on television and it was something that I'd really enjoyed. Um, and then 2012, they set up this committee and they were looking for volunteers um, and they were encouraging deaf people to go along as well. And I thought, oh yeah, I'd love to get involved in the Commonwealth Games. But it wasn't easy. You had to go along for an interview and we had an interpreter for the interview. Um, that, but then they changed the date and so on. So it, was, it got quite tricky. But then I got through to the training stage. I had to really work on them to pers persuade them to give me an interpreter for the training. I think it was a new experience for them. I mean, that's a good thing. You know, they didn't say no, um, but it was a process. And then eventually when I started uh, volunteering, they gave me the times and the dates. Some were early in the morning, some were in the middle of the afternoon, some were quite late in the evening. Um, you know, just before the last train home. So a number of different times for the shifts. And I wanted an interpreter to cover all of those shifts. Uh, and I got it in the end. And I did really enjoy myself because I was meeting hearing people. And I think it was great uh, to raise awareness amongst hearing communities that deaf people can do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was lovely. I was having chats with people in sign language. People were interested. They were engaging. You know, what is sign language? I was talking to them. So a really good opportunity for deaf people to be visible as well. I met Usain Bolt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, Prince Edward as well I met, um, who was um, who was on the committee and came to give a speech. So it was really exciting. Um, and it, it gave me a lot of joy. I made a lot of friends. It was a terrific experience. Yet yeah, networking, exactly, exactly so. Okay, before we ask you more, let's have take a look at Lillian at volunteering for the Commonwealth Games. Here she is. We've got a photo to show you just now. <laughs> Isn't that great? Lovely. What a lovely memory for you that. Absolutely so. And to have all those people and the VIPs milling around. Yeah, it was, I felt very welcome. So you have, you volunteered, you got involved, you met all these people. Um, but what did they kind of give you really? Well, um, I gave them my time, but they gave me all kinds of memories and memorabilia, including this. Oh, it's a nice T-shirt. Yeah, absolutely. This, a jacket. Yeah, that's a jacket that goes over the top. Yeah. And it's waterproof. Wow. Um, they gave me an umbrella. They gave me a tote bag. They gave me shoes. I got all kinds of things. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely lovely, all logoed and branded. Um, and a cap, yes, a cap, absolutely. And because I went on a, a number of days, um, you know, you got a security pass, and uh, actually they gave me this, let me show you. This is my security, this is my badge, my thank you badge, with Commonwealth Games logo on, yeah. And after a few more days, they gave me another badge, this one. Lovely. And when I finally finished at the end of the games, I was presented with this. 
So what's that, Lillian? What's in the box? Oh, that's really cute. What what is it? What does it do? Ah, it's a USB <laughs> yes. stick. It is. It's a USB stick. Yes, absolutely. It's a really nice gift. So all of this kind of, you know, the memento is things to remember. And lovely. You got that as a volunteer. Yeah, absolutely. I think because, you know, I wasn't paid anything. So, you know, I got lunch vouchers, but I had to pay for my travel myself. So um, you've got other things in kind, really. You've got the experience. I got the tracksuit. Uh, and I think hearing people learned a lot from me and I learned from them, to be honest. So really fantastic experience, really worthwhile. I'd recommend to anyone if the Commonwealth Games comes back to Glasgow or anywhere else in the UK, it's absolutely worth volunteering for it. Jerry. Um, do you have you, you are involved in some volunteering and I think you have something to show us as well from it don't you well it's something from Queen particularly Freddie Mercury I was addicted to Queen songs um I could pick up the bass but I couldn't hear the song so I used to sign them and as I remember time that on, <laughs> Um, there was honestly there was some there uh there was a lady who was eight at the time, May at St. Vincent's. I and, remember her. Yeah, well she I showed her a photograph and we went to Glasgow Market looking for some material and it was bright yellow material we were looking for. We got it, the the white stuff and all the trims and May made me a Freddie Mercury jacket. Anyway, it took it about two or three weeks and eventually came to the Dev Club and she showed me the jacket and I still have it to this day. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's lovely. That's so Freddie. It's fantastic. <laughs> and does it still fit you, Jerry? Does uh, it still fit you? Is it tight? Uh, not now. Just far too small. <laughs> When I touch it, I still get emotional, but what's well, teeny on me now, not a chance. Ah, you've grown up properly now, but it's nice uh, to keep that memory, right? Oh, yeah, it's an absolutely special memory. My son put on, it was too big for him, so it just kept in the special memory box. And so, actually, the lady who sewed it for you was volunteering, in effect. Isn't that lovely? That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that's right. I can remember she lived near, she lived in a home near St Vincent's. It was a care home she lived in and she would come to the club all the time. And then I couldn't believe it when she gave me that. And I travelled all over the country uh, and in England wearing that and signing my Freddie Mercury uh, songs. But as I say, it's too small for me now. So you were quite famous for your your musical performances at various deaf clubs around Scotland. So um, wearing that jacket... So lovely to have those memories. Are you, do you still do anything musical? I, I, I do some DJing, although I've, had, I've cut down, but uh, I'm getting too old. You're never too old, Jerry. never too old. Not too Moira, old. can you tell us a little bit more, Moira, about your experience and your, your journey and, and you know how that's affected? Has it helped your CV and in terms of jobs and things? I suppose um, working with deaf blind people, volunteering when I was a teenager, I got that formal training, but also I, I started to uh, observe young people and how they communicated. And they would be saying things like, uh, they would people would recognise me from perfume or a scent, or please try and wear the same watch, because then they could recognise you from that, from touch. So it was things like that. I was getting up in the morning, making sure that everybody, you know, kept to the routine and they enjoyed themselves, they ate well and they weren't isolated. And I was only 17. I was so young, but it had such an impact on me. And it, it made me keep on volunteering up until now. That's great. No, no, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Also in deaf organisations, was in the Youth Club Committee, the Netball Committee and the Drama Committee. And at that time, I was a treasurer and I could remember sometimes we'd be in a bit of tricky situations and we'd be having to look for maybe costumes or, or we're trying to sell sort of tickets because it was important that we, that we had we worked together as a team and that's how we looked and envisaged things within the deaf club it was like we all helped each other out and so i think when you know 
you've asked me about my experience. Um, youth said, thought it was amazing. I never realised how much I'd done, but you can see how it affects you all your life. And also you pass it on, really, and, and it does kind of inform your career path, I suppose, and, and what you what you do later in life. Um, we've got a question come in, so I'm just going to um, uh, look at some of the questions we've had from our audience. And this is from Elaine He. Volunteering for an organisation means non-paid work. Do young deaf people know this? Do they know that they're not going to be paid? So how would you answer that, anyone? Jerry, over to you, yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I grew up in the area of Hamilton and my parents were deaf, so I was encouraged and taken to the deaf club all the time. So I was used to seeing adult deaf company signing and there was other deaf families that went as well. So we ended up... Um, going through life together and then you meet and go to different clubs like St Vincent's but that connection's always there but in my life most of people always volunteered yeah and I think that was sort of just part of us and then when the deaf clubs closed a lot of the, the children have been mainstreamed they've, they've lost out and this valuable um uh, lesson that we we showed all the time by just being kind and helping each other well, you raise a good point there, Jerry, about your mother and father being deaf, and that helped you to get involved in that whole scene. Uh, and now the children are being mainstreamed, and perhaps we need to reach out to them more to get to bring them along to the deaf club to show them those kinds of opportunities. Maybe try to um, liaise with the schools, perhaps. Moira, Lillian, do you have any thoughts on that about how you reach out to young people? Well, I think it's a good idea. I think it's really good to show young people a mix of what volunteering is and so that they can actually go, ah, that's it. They don't think that it's as, as uh, it's just committee only. It could be, you know, cleaning up your local street. It could be helping people who are homeless, maybe in a food kitchen. It could be uh, going to visit older people just for company. So it really is a range of things. I think it would be good to actually share that yeah. with them. And teaching sign as well. I mean, I, I, like being a befriender, um, you know, being a befriender, teaching someone to sign. I mean, in my experience, um, the, the International Youth Group of Disabled People, which was oof, many years ago now, um, I got uh, involved in volunteering for that. And, and we had our own council. The council gave us a free room. Um so we, we were given a free room to teach sign BSL uh, for a number of weeks, and it was really well attended by hearing people. So that's one example. Um, so young people could, could be doing that. You know, if they have those skills, they could be teaching sign, they could be befriending others. Yeah, I think really we, we need to be getting young people involved because it's very important for your identity, isn't it? And especially... Um, as you said, uh, Lillian, you know, it's a good opportunity to show hearing people um, how deaf people operate and, and for uh, us to have an experience of me meeting hearing people. So, you know, if people volunteer in a kind of soup kitchen or something, it's a way of kind of paying back, isn't it? Yeah, same with charity shops. I've got two deaf friends who both work in charity shops. Um, they don't work at the front because communication would be difficult, but so they work in the back, receiving the donations, uh, steaming the clothes, pricing the things up, hanging them. Um, so there are lots of things that you can do. Any charity shop or any organisation will have a role for you. So I see often young people in, in charity shops at weekends, and, and there seems to be more and more of them now. So we have another question now from Erin McCluskey. Erin asks, what's the most invaluable tool you've learned through volunteering that you would love to pass on to my younger generation? So could you name one experience, folks, a particular experience that you think would be something you'd want to pass on to, to the younger generation? Moira, Jerry, Lillian, anything coming to mind? 
was it would it be the Commonwealth Games, Lillian, or do you have something else that's springing to mind? I think the most important tool is uh, time, timekeeping, and, and being prepared. It's not about money. I know some people think, um, you know, volunteering, you don't get any money, but you have to think differently. Um, sometimes you'll be paid for travel expenses. So uh, some charities, I think, will do that. Some won't. Uh, some, uh, if you're working all day, will provide you lunch. Um, if you're just doing a morning shift or an afternoon shift, then possibly not. But for me, the most valuable tool was the time because it gave me so many skills and, and I was able to offer things from my experience. But at the same time, they gave me new skills and experiences. So Lillian, do you think the Commonwealth Games was a good case in point with the sport? Because that was an opportunity. I mean, that was here in Glasgow, wasn't it? We Don't we have this cycle competition, the velodrome thing? Is that coming in August? Um, maybe they're looking for volunteers for that. Well, possibly so. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and if, if you're a deaf person and you're interested in cycling, get along, get in touch with them. Ask them if you can volunteer. You might get a free tickets. You might get to meet famous people. You might get to see the sport more close up. Um, Moira and Jerry, do you have examples of uh, experiences that you have found particularly valuable? I think for me, the most the example was uh, was just the confidence to try things. That was it. That just wanting to get in and, and show that you know I'm an okay person and I want to sort of um, assist you in any way I can. So I think that confidence going into it. But from your particular experience, Moira, what what's been your best and and most valuable thing? Oh, my best. All of them, I've, I couldn't pick one of them from being young and to as old as I am now. I loved all of them. But I, what I realised is I liked working with people. You know, I do like creating crafts and things like that, but actually I'm a people person. You know, children, deaf, blind people, older people, I'm always drawn to working with people. You know, especially when I reflect, I can see it's mostly people. Sherry, what's been your best experience? What would you pass on to the next generation? I think for me, the most interesting one is drama. I mean, I couldn't uh -huh. beat that. It was just working out how to sign songs. Um, Moira could tell you. I mean, we all had such a really good relationship. You know, hopefully one day we'll all get back as volunteers. You know, maybe we'll try and encourage the young people to sort of realise that deaf people can do this. Um, I mean, you look at young people today, you, you wonder. You know, it just seems the numbers are low. Okay, great. Thank you. That's great. Um, um, a slightly different question, again from Erin, but I think it's a, a different angle, so I think it's useful to know. Why is it so important for young people to get involved with volunteering, especially within the deaf community? Why is it so important to get involved with the deaf club or deaf sports or deaf organisations? Um, what would you say to Erin? Why is it important for young deaf people? Lillian. Well, if I could go first, I think, especially now when deaf children are mainstreamed, I think many young deaf people have fewer opportunities to meet other deaf people. So volunteering would provide those opportunities to get involved, um, to work for charities. That gives you an opportunity to meet people, maybe the BDA um, or SENSE or um, Deaf Action. Um, you can learn about organisations and what they do. So you're volunteering, you're giving your time, but you'll get something back, most definitely. Moira, what would you like to add to that? Well, I agree totally with Lillian, um, but I also think it's an opportunity to develop your confidence, meet new friends, learn from others who are older. It's empowering for you as well. So I think there's a lot of skills you can get. Great. Thank you. Jerry. what would you say to young people? Well, again, I agree. I think it's just the opportunity for young people to see that they have a future you know, can see what it's like within the deaf world and that will maybe help yeah. them navigate the hearing world. 
you know, a lot of young people in Aberdeen, um, there's some at a deaf school, deaf unit. Um, and when they leave school, they end up going in the mainstream school, um, the secondary school. And it's almost like they've forgotten their deaf community. Um, and I'm keen to keep that engagement there, to keep that link with them. Yeah, and c could I just come back again? Because I think um, sports and outdoors as well, like, you know, the BDA when I was young, which is some time ago now, used to arrange, co arrange courses for schools to come together and go kind of climbing, rock climbing, walking, canoeing, kayaking, that sort of thing. And I used to get involved volunteering as, with that as a sort of warden, you know, safety warden. I used to look after the girls. Um, and, you know, we, we'd get sports clubs coming over from England and they go, oh, you, you're a leader, you know. So we were a role model, really. Um, and so that was just from volunteering. So as Moira said, uh, we provide role models for younger deaf kids to give them confidence for the future. And that's important. So they see other deaf people and they can get advice from those deaf people, older deaf people, and, and pass that on. And perhaps, you know, it's not just about uh, here in Scotland. Maybe there are volunteering opportunities in England and Wales as well. Perhaps you could travel abroad with it, um, you know, with your volunteer work for a week or two, uh, helping people paint or renovate, you know, uh, decrepit buildings and things so it doesn't have to be locally you can actually look out and look across the world for those kinds of opportunities um maybe you could you know take some time off work to volunteer somewhere else in the world yeah vso voluntary services overseas and um, that's uh, deaf people i know have been involved in that for a year or two years and have found it the most amazing experience yeah, some of these big organisations like the WFD, EUD might be looking for volunteers for events that they're organising. So you would really have a great opportunity to learn how those organisations work and bring those skills back to help develop organisations here. Uh, Leslie Davison has asked us a question. Leslie asked, would you agree that volunteering is a way of giving back to the community? Um, Jerry, you mentioned this earlier. You said, you know, deaf clubs, we really need to encourage more people to get engaged with the deaf club. And is this something, as, as Leslie says, a way of giving back to the deaf community, do you feel? I do. Yeah, I do. Yep. Can I say something, Avro? I think because, see, when you're young, when I was, at, I was at St Vincent's since I was nine, and everybody did everything for me. They organised everything for me. They, or, they arranged everything to go to youth club. But then as I got older, you know, I wanted to do these things myself, so I copied what they were doing and, and so, learnt myself. So passing on is a way of giving back, isn't it? Giving to young people who might look up to you and then you give back to them. I mean, Moira, Moira your experience... You know, you've been uh, engaging with older people as well, haven't you? And people with dementia and so on. Yep, that's right. After I was also a befriender, and I do. I am a befriender. I do that for a company. We, we play games, have a chat, and it's good for people's well-being. And it could be that someone is maybe been in the hospital, and I'll go and visit just for half an hour or one hour and you'll see the light shine in their face they're just so happy for that company because maybe they don't have any family so this is an opportunity just to chat and there are a lot of deaf um, people out there in care homes at the moment who may be feeling isolated and lonely so um as we've said before maybe volunteering there is a nice opportunity um maybe organising trips, maybe deaf people need um, lifts. It, I, I think, you, Jerry, you had a minibus at one point, weren't you, with the minibus driver at one point? Yeah. Can you tell us about that? That was at St Vincent's. St Vincent's had their own minibus at the time, and every Thursday I would drive and do the pickup and get all the, the, the older people in the van to get them in for the afternoon bingo. And then when it was time to go home, I dropped them all off, and I did that. Obviously, that's all going now. And I remember, you know, a long time ago at the Deaf Club, um, 
there used to be um, minibuses that used to drop you off at home after the bingo and people uh, getting lifts and pickups from here, there and everywhere. And that was a lot of volunteering involved in that, really, because... Um, you know, there'd be 10 or 12 <laughs> drop-off points for each money bus. It would take some time, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you'll remember that yourself, right? Yeah, I remember it was mostly St Vincent's people. And how long were you out doing those runs? About an hour or two hours? Oh, or? honestly, oh, definitely over an hour, definitely. I mean, sometimes we're, we, they weren't all, Glasgow's not just this tiny wee place. They were all at every end of Glasgow. But, you know, I didn't mind. Um, and what would happen would be is if someone wanted to stay longer for the bingo, then I would need to take the others home and then come back for the other ones. Oh, you've got a good heart on you, Jerry. Oh, it was you all done in the Moira. past. Yeah, I can remember when I went to the youth club, some of the deaf people there, they didn't know even how to go to the youth club. So I used to yeah. meet them at the bus stop and show them the number of the bus and guide them and show them this is what we do and this is how we get to the deaf club. We'd maybe do that two or three or four times until they were confident and then they'd do it themselves. So it just suddenly came to me. Great. Yeah, you don't realise all the things you've done, right? Yeah, it wasn't me, but I remember my husband, Jock Young, um, uh, he used to do the minibus as well. Um, and, and that would go for football, for badminton. for um, So, yeah, he often used to do that. Uh, I used to just drive with him sometimes, you know, at weekends he'd be off in the minibus. I wouldn't see him for a while. And so, yeah, I, I remember badminton clubs. It used to be like who can drive and uh, netball as well. I'm sure Moira, you'll remember. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> off in the in the minibus for the netball you, and you'd be away for hours and hours, wouldn't you? You know, uh, you'd have two, <laughs> maybe two, three drivers taking it in turns because it'd be such a long journey or you'd plan trips and, and away days. As I say, you know, the netball might be weekend tournaments away and, you know, there'd be lots of those kinds of organisational aspects of volunteering, like organising those competitions, organising those tournaments. Um, I mean, we used to finish work at five and you, you couldn't wait to get to the Deaf Club to help out and do more. Um, so Moira used to be involved in the committees as well at the Deaf Club. Um, That's right. So that would be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. How many days a week would you be involved? Oh, let's think. I need to try and work this out. A Wednesday was a youth club um, that I volunteered at. Drama was, netball was Sunday. Saturday was drama. So three times probably every week. Yeah. You know, I kept taking all my hats off been a different committee member. And it, it, was that the same experience for you, Jerry? Or, I mean, are you still involved in these uh, that many things? I mean, how many things did you used to be involved in and how many are you involved in now? Now I'm just down to the sort of where one thing. Oh, no, you're right. Maybe You two do things. Facebook as well. Yeah, yeah, too. You no, know, you're yeah. right, Avro. Facebook and chair. Um, and I, I do the admin um, for that as well. So I've been doing it for two years. So, yeah. Okay, so you're, actually, you're doing quite a few things, aren't you, really? Yeah, we pick some songs on a laptop and people email them. And we sing some songs. So that's volunteering as well. Because it really just started from people asking, you know, could we do sing, sing this song, sign of this song? And then we'd sort it all out, get the music and the timing right. And it happened, it was at COVID time. It was just before COVID. And well, obviously that was... Disappeared, but we're getting it back now. And obviously that was a lot of your time, wasn't it? And Lillian, I know that you you are famous for your volunteering. How many are you doing now? Or just the one, but it is quite time consuming. I'm involved in it every day, uh, emails, um, doing research, meeting people, writing papers, checking Facebook, uh, but treasury as well, you know, fundraising. So I'm part of the committee. Yeah, so it does take a lot of my time. I absolutely thoroughly enjoy it, though. It keeps me going. So when you were working, obviously you volunteered as well, but now that you're retired, do you feel it's the volunteering is more important to, to, as you say, keep you going? Yes, I think it's important for me because it keeps my mind active. Uh, and also it makes me go out and meet people. 
Um, the Deaf History Society is great because it brings in lots of new faces all the time. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, you know, in Saturday I'll be in Carlisle. Um, so I'll be meeting English people, uh, English deaf people and chatting with them. So I'll be making new friends, um, building bridges, talking about our joint history. So, yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And Moira, are, are you involved in committees now or have you cut down? No, at the moment I'm not because um, I'm just drowning with everything at the moment. But I definitely want to do something in the future. I really want, in the back of my head, I want to do something for asylum seekers and refugees. Lovely. Sorry, Jerry. Well, maybe like... you can get back to the drama, Moira. Well, I might, Jerry, if you want to set up. Why don't you? Well... Guys, you should get together after this. And next week is Volunteers <laughs> Week, as we've said, so perhaps you could kick something off there. Um, I know that volunteering, we've talked about getting involved in the deaf community and we've talked about being involved in the hearing community as well. But as soon as, as, as we as deaf people get involved in the hearing community, then there's this issue of communication. And is that a problem? How, how do you solve that? Are there interpreters? What what happens? Like, you know, if you went along to a soup kitchen, for example, to volunteer, wouldn't it all be hearing people? How would you get around that issue? Well, you're right. And that's been something that's been in the back of my mind before when I've wanted to get involved with a charity and thought, well, how will I get interpreters because if I'm not being paid there's no money to pay for the interpreters um but luckily I've been able to apply for access to work when I was working but of course now that I'm retired I can't do that so I rely on the charity or the organization um so it does make it more difficult um and I would say that the government should be thinking about that because they do want to encourage people to volunteer so I think it makes sense for organizations to be able to recruit deaf people as volunteers. So if they're looking to recruit deaf volunteers, then we need to make sure that deaf people have access uh, and are welcomed and feel confident and are able to contribute their ideas and so on. Um, you know, I mean, there are many times when people have got involved volunteering and then ended up working for an organization. But uh, as we mentioned, there may well be some examples, some, some barriers to, to volunteering. For example, we, we talked about um, the coronation, the recent coronation uh, when Prince Charles became King Charles. Now, there was that uh, long weekend of a celebration, but I was quite surprised to see, um, you know, we had the Friday off and then we had the, the, the coronation day itself. But on the Monday of that long weekend, it was supposed to be a, a big volunteering effort called uh, the Big Help Out. That's it, Lillian. Thank you. The Big Help Out. Um, and a lot of deaf people didn't know that was going to be taking place on the Monday. We were kind of rather late to the party. Um, and of the people that I've spoken to, deaf people didn't know it wasn't really advertised well enough or I think that depended on the charity. Um, I think a Deaf Action or the BDA could have got involved. I think some other organisations did. Um, you know, they thought of it. Others didn't. I think you had to go looking for the information, didn't you? Um and perhaps we should have shared it between us as deaf organizations because the Monday came about and, and we weren't prepared for that. So Lillian, you know, you talked about volunteering. Um, you know, we, we had that coronation, but you volunteered on that day, didn't you? Well, I was, yeah, doing my Deaf History Society was my contribution for that day. <laughs> I was still working at that. So that was my volunteering. I'm going to put that on the on the form, tick that off. Did you well, do something, Moira? I looked after two dogs. One was my own and one was my friend's. And so I dog sat for the weekend. So that well, was Well, that's volunteering. Time. That counts. I was looking after a cat as well. <laughs> I was cat sitting. So I was volunteering. Um, but, you know, you don't have to work with people. You could be working with animals, right? You know, there are lots of volunteer, uh, volunteer opportunities in animal rescue centres. and. Oh, I would yeah. love that, Avro. Honestly, I'd love that. Yeah, and you'd see all the different animals, wouldn't you? You get to stroke them, you get to look after them. It'd be lovely. Oh, Lillian. 
I think there's something I'm not sure you can volunteer, but I think you do have to have some training on that. Um, and that would require interpreters because you'd need to have your health and safety uh, training. And um, there's quite a bit of red tape sometimes. So in the olden days, you just volunteered and that was it. You just went along and you were done. But um, it's a little more bureaucratic now. Yeah, so there are various hoops to jump through. Um, yeah, and that might be, uh, th those might be barriers and off-putting to some people. So you may need to plan ahead um, and think about what kind of volunteering you might like to do. Anybody here got any exciting plans on the horizon? That's anything cool. new and different? New? Yeah, anything new and different? Anything that you're thinking, right, I'm going to now go and volunteer with animals. I haven't done that before. Or anything on your volunteering horizon, like volunteering with homeless people, for example, or, you know, giving something back to the people on the streets, anything like that? Any new ideas? Dog walking, I think. I'd love to do dog walking. Um, I'd like to offer dog walking to old people or who are who can't do it anymore or who are perhaps too ill to walk their dogs temporarily. So I'd like to do that kind of thing. Lovely. Moira, anything that you're thinking of? Ooh, let me think. Do you know, I'd love to do something with makeup. Yeah, oh. uh, uh, face painting. I'm quite skilled at that. I can make So maybe with children, children or adults? Or... Yeah. Yeah, I could maybe do something like that. Yeah. With and both. Jerry? S singing to an audience, sign singing, or something something for deaf people with music? Or I really, if it's within the deaf club, it's, it's hard because um, we've got a group that are used to the same things. So bringing someone new could be difficult. Well, yeah. why don't you, you know, Give a new volunteer your jacket and hand over your mantle. You yeah, probably be too too big for them, eh? And do we have any tips for people at home who might be thinking about volunteering in the future? Maybe we've um, piqued their interest and they're thinking about uh, where to start on their volunteer journey. So any tips for them from uh, any of you, for young people, for old people alike? Uh, any tips? I would say... Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Oh. The doors open. I'm sure that charities will be crying out for volunteers. They're really always looking for people. The more volunteers, the better, um, because then they can share the workload out between the volunteers that they have. If they only have a few volunteers, the workload can be kind of quite daunting. So the more volunteers makes it easier. Commit. Um, and then obviously the more people who commit, the, the less time you have to commit. So just make a start. Go and knock on a door. They're waiting for you. Be assertive. Um, doesn't matter what you do. You've got skills. Just give them your time. If you like people, go and do it. Great uh, tip. Avril Jerry? Would, yeah, Avril would say within the care homes, there's maybe deaf people just in, the, in different buildings scattered all over the place alone. Yeah. So I would be mm -hmm. thinking, you know, maybe trying to get uh, something to get everybody together. The fact that they're just so apart, maybe arranging to get them in the one building or something, you know, uh, can maybe talk to the council or something like that. I mean, the council have just decided, you know, to place them in these homes, but maybe we should be having dialogue to say they should be together. Or if you know of isolated people... Um, you know, perhaps people in the deaf club could befriend um, each of them and once a month take it in turns to, to visit each of them so that you're volunteering by just going along and chatting to them so that they've got someone visiting them every week because everyone in the deaf club is taking it in turns um, and your members can go, go and volunteer. Maybe school leavers can meet um, older deaf people, you know, nice for young people to chat with the older generation, something like that, Moira? That's great. I think also when you look at small organisations, they really struggle. So don't be frightened to offer your support and your help. Um, there is absolutely no harm in asking that if you want to be a, a volunteer, they will appreciate you offering anything. 
I'd say I think it's important to reinforce to young people that volunteering Absolutely. is so good for your CV. It really helps, you know, that you haven't just been sitting there going, oh, I can't find work, so I'm going to give up. You've turned that into something positive. You've gone out and you've got some experience. Um, it's a good way to spend your time to get new skills. It looks great on your CV. It's really important. I'd encourage young people to think about that. Yeah, so it looks like you've done lots of things and it shows the kind of person you are, um, you know, that you've been out and you've picked up these skills uh, and you've identified these volunteering opportunities. We do have one more question uh, from uh, Sean Noon. No volunteer, no community. It's always important to show value to the volunteers as they give their time for the community's sake. But recognise this hard work could be tricky from the deaf community as they don't know how to praise or appreciate our volunteers. Um, so do we need to praise and value our volunteers? Do we need to thank them? Do we need to make sure that we show our appreciation for their hard work? Because nobody wants a thankless task. We need the experience to be positive. So we need to thank people for their time. Any thoughts on that? Lillian, thank you, Sean. Yeah, I'd like to share my experience from when I was working with the RNID. Um, it was a volunteer project um, and we had a volunteer handbook and we brought people in and we trained them. And I remember we always had a rewards system so that um, people had something that they could take away, they could put in their CV portfolio, they had something to show. So it was a kind of certificate of volunteering, it showed that you'd given your time. We'd also invite people along to the Christmas party, they get a free Christmas dinner, they didn't have to pay, they get a free ticket, so that we would value them as if they were part of the staff. And that really helped a lot in my experience. Uh, Moira and Jerry, anything that you'd like to add to that? How do we appreciate and thank our volunteers? You know, Jerry, you said you've been involved in the, the Deaf Club for a long time. Um, how do you, have you had any thanks or appreciation on Moira? Well, yeah. I could think about um, the netball and we would have a Rabbi Burns do. And there'd be lots of people from the Deaf community who'd be so excited and we'd worked so hard and to watch them enjoying themselves made us feel so valued and we felt really proud as a committee. So I think watching people enjoy. Do you have anything to add? I think what Moira's saying, when she, it made me remember, uh, reminded me of something she said, Rabbi Burns. I can remember uh, we had lots of uh, volunteers, interpreters that came in and never get paid for Rabbi Burns yeah. night. You know, and we gave them some food and they were volunteering. Yeah, it was a lovely woman. And um, I can remember a film where it says, you know, with thank you to all the volunteer interpreters. So just a small thing, but really important to just acknowledge people's work, to thank them for their volunteering. I think it's important because it was bringing something to our lives to enrich our lives. So really important to thank you. Uh, I think we're close to time now, but we're going to give the last word to Erin. Erin wants to say something. Erin McCluskey says, I hope as the result of this live stream, deaf young people are more empowered to reach out to organisations in, in regards to volunteering. Whilst it's important to be assertive, it's a two-way street too. Organisations should advertise for young people to volunteer with them as well. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So it's a two-way street, Erin's saying, you know, you give and you receive. So the organisation should be reaching out to young people for volunteers as well. Thank you for that, Erin. Um, Lillian, with Deaf History Scotland, do you ever reach out and recruit volunteers? Well, actually, the AGM, uh, we were looking for volunteers. Um, our committee... Uh, wants to kind of uh, recruit more. Uh, the RNID as a volunteer project as well. So they advertise, they're always recruiting people, uh, deaf, deaf and hard of hearing people to come along uh, and, and be trainers. And it works well. So yes, but Erin's right. It's really important. If you don't advertise those opportunities, people don't know about them. Yeah. 
And Jerry, you were saying, uh, you mentioned earlier that you played darts. Um, do you need volunteers to come and help set up the dart boards and prepare for the matches and that sort of thing? In our old deaf club, um, the committee would always be the ones who'd volunteer and they would help make sure everything was all set up, sweep up, check the boards were clean, chalk was there. Uh, but when that deaf club closed, that kind of finished. However, but our, our deaf club we've got just now is people are saying that they want to be involved in darts, you know, and compete with Glasgow, Dundee, Edinburgh and the like. So hopefully we're going to get that back again. Before, our numbers were huge. There's not as many now, maybe three, four, five, but it's just needing a wee bit more uh, gentle encouragement. Yeah, you just need to grow it again, don't you? And also, you know, there are the international opportunities like bowling. You know, that used yep. to be quite an enormous international scene, didn't it? And planning the socials and the, you know, the events of football as well. You know, all of these things are really important. And perhaps anyone involved in those kinds of committees and organisations could be helping to recruit young people, thinking about reaching out to young people, getting them involved in, you know, bowling and so on. Yeah, just to advertise. Yes, I remember Edinburgh Deaf Festival. Deaf Action has been looking for volunteers for Edinburgh Deaf Festival, and I'm sure that's something young people uh, would love to get involved in. That's going to be happening again this August. So I'm sure if you got in touch with Deaf Action, they'd welcome young volunteers. I'm sure there are lots of things to be done, from selling tickets to working in the bar to cleaning up afterwards and so on. Yeah, we were just thinking about bowling as well, you know, getting people to get involved in those kinds of organisations. There are all kinds of opportunities for young people. I think it's important that we think about reaching out and encouraging people to come along because otherwise, if you're just sitting at home, you're going to get lonely. It's a really good opportunity for social contact and to gain confidence and skills. Our hour this evening has whizzed by. We've had a lovely discussion, but just before we bring it to a close, Anybody want to contribute any last words about volunteering? No? Also, I'd like to, say, to remind everyone that next week is the UK's Volunteers Week. So you might be thinking about something or you might be um, need this little reminder to say thank you to your volunteers at your deaf club or whatever organisation you run. And I'd like to thank our presenters for being involved today and for your wonderful contributions and your tips. Thank you all so much. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>